France, 1944. There's a full moon out. And Corporal Timothy Aloysius Cadwallader Dugan, dum-dum to his friends, is running for his life. There's a whole barrage of fire coming at the Allied forces from every angle. Dum Dum calls to his men to take cover as he slides down, trying to find a good spot to return fire. While he's still wrestling with his gun, trying to clear a jam, the corporal hears a few harsh words in German from behind him. A Nazi soldier has a heavy rifle pointed right at Dugan's head. No chance he'd miss from this distance. This is it. Sergeant Nick Fury takes a second to snark at Corporal Dum Dum for taking a break. Dugan pulls his commander up over the body of the Nazi, ready to join the rest of the howling commandos. Everyone's coming together, now most of the shooting stopped. Fury's still on edge though, sure something's not right. And yeah, as soon as he said that, there's a rumbling sound from nearby. One of the commandos points, shocked at what's coming their way. A massive tank rolls towards the howling commands, towering above the infantrymen. Planes circle close behind it, ready to provide close support. This isn't something infantry are going to be able to deal with. We still got civilians to the south. We need to draw its attention. Listen up, commandos. Rebel, get to high ground and send a signal if the Nazis change direction. Gabe, Dino, get to the bridge and be ready to block that sucker once we draw the tank closer. Junior, we're going to need you and those grenades to help turn this tank around. Head north and create as much noise as possible. Izzy, Dugan, you two are with me. The tank's not gonna just let the commandos finish plotting this out. The main cannon fires with an earth-shattering thoom, blowing the whole area around the commandos to hell. Dum Dum yells for his sergeant. It'll take more than that to kill Nick Fury though. He's already back on his feet, firing at the tank with his rifle. He charges forward, aiming shot after shot at the armored destroyer. His bullets thunk off its hull harmlessly. At least this can help divert its attention from Izzy and Dum Dum. It works. The tank opens fire on Fury with its machine guns. The sergeant twists, sprinting on, trying to keep running and find more cover from the tank. Before he can though, the main gun fires again, blowing Fury in the building behind him to hell. Fury's still conscious, but he's got his leg crushed under a smashed piece of stone pillar. He tries to shift the rock off, struggling to pull himself free, but it's too late. The tank is already on top of him barrel of its main cannon pointed right at the unlucky sergeant. But Fury's not dying yet. Captain America's here, the tank shell blast breaking over his mighty shield. Thanks for the assist, Cap. Cap reaches down, pulling the rubble off his friend with a grin. Assist? That's an interesting way of saying I saved your life from an impenetrable Nazi tank, sergeant. And potato potato. Cap helps Fury up, trying to tell his friend to head back and see a medic. He can finish this. Fury's not gonna give up that easily though. He's got his squad back with him. He's not gonna bow out now. Cap can accept that. Still, he's gonna take points, telling the commandos to wait on his signal before charging right at the Nazi tank. With the brief pause, Dum Dum can't resist ribbing his Sarge. Turns out even Nick Fury needs saving now and then. Cap hits the tank hard, smashing into its hull with just one blow from his shield. Now he's got an in, Steve starts ripping through the metal, throwing scrap behind him. Soon enough, he's burrowed into the tank's interior, shocking the Nazi crew. The howling commandos just stare from outside, not sure what to do. They're supposed to wait for a signal from Cap, but after he did something like that, what could the signal be? There's a scream of fear from the tank. A few seconds later, the entry hatch is wrenched off and the crew gets thrown out after it. The howling commandos are ready for them, guns raised. It's over and no one had to fire a shot. Soon enough, the soldiers are back at camp. Fury's getting his leg injuries treated in a medical tent, while Cap and a friendly general talk about the state of the war. The Nazis are so desperate, they're starting to get unpredictable. Fury agrees. That village attack didn't have a ton of manpower, but the Nazis hit in the dead of night and had that super tank backing them up. Before he can go on though, he groans. Those leg wounds are pretty painful. He yells at the nurse that he wants booze, not medical treatments. 
Cap's annoyed at Fury's treatment of the woman who's just trying to do her job. The general brings this back to the tactical situation. The Nazis, now being driven back, are working on something big. Wolfschanze. The Allies don't know much about this. The name translates to Wolf's Lair, and it's supposed to be a bunker. Just outside Rostenburg, Eastern Prussia, Fury whistles as he takes a look at the dossier. The Nazis have put a whole lot of troops together to guard this middle-of-nowhere bunker, even though they don't have men to spare. This has to be important. Cap wants to know what's at the heart of this. The general assumes it's something big. Weapons, information, supplies, whatever's in there, the Nazis are keeping it safe. No allied forces can get close. They sent an ace spy in, but lost contact in 24 hours. The only message they got was that the Nazis are moving a bunch of people into the bunker, civilians and soldiers. Cap volunteers to go in alone. He doesn't want to risk any more allied casualties. He's Captain America. He can get in and out with all the information the general needs. But that's not enough. The Allies want this bunker burned down right away. The bunker with civilians in it? Yeah, they might be collaborators, but you don't know that. They could be hostages. Fury tries to pull himself out of bed, ready to back Cap up and lead the Howling Commandos into the fight. But he's still out of it. Cap catches Nick before he falls, and the general makes it clear. The commandos are going in, but Fury's too wounded to join them. They'll need someone to lead. Fury looks at Cap. Steve's eyes go wide. Lead the commandos? Me? Sergeant, that's your position. I, I couldn't. But the sergeant's made up his mind. He puts a hand to the young hero's shoulder. It's gotta be you, Cap. The men are a fine group, but they function best with a little structure. I know they'd be honored to follow you into battle. Cut to the Howling Commandos all complaining about Captain America, even while they're flying into action with him. Izzy claims he'd rather take orders from a one-armed gorilla than the captain. Junior and Dino get into a back and forth about which of them is dumber, with the younger commando coming out ahead. The mood's getting a bit lighter, but Dum Dum brings it back down. He's not happy about this. The captain's not their leader. Whatever the general says, one of the men tries to stand up for Cap. He's a hero, right? But that's not enough for Dugan. He's a gimmick with some special abilities. I saw him back there in France. He cut through a tank like it was dough. Sure, he's strong, but when he runs headfirst into enemy fire because he can, are we just supposed to follow? Dum Dum's thoughts get interrupted by Cap. They're almost at the drop site. Everyone needs to grab a parachute. Dino points out Cap himself hasn't got one. Steve Rogers just grins and jumps out the plane with nothing to slow his fall. Dum Dum grumbles, clutching onto his hat as he follows right behind the super soldier. Cap's happy. He's enthusiastic. He's gonna take point for all of this. But as far as Dugan's concerned, he's just gonna get them all killed. The full moon rises above the wolf's lair. It's not the impenetrable bastion the Allies thought. It looks ruined, overgrown. A woman wearing ritual jewelry, fangs, and skulls has been focused on her occult rite. The way, she chants, is interred with bones. She kneels in front of a small pot, casting a series of small bones into its depths. She's looking into the future and found what she sought. Death, cold and dark written in the bones. The Nazi officer behind her, Commander Witt, wants to know whose death she sees. Ross, the mage, calls that the wrong question. Witt grumbles that's what she said yesterday, and the day before. All she does is mutter ominous vague stuff about the future. The Nazi commander's clearly gotten impatient with this. Witt snaps that he just wants a clear answer. There's a terrible silence. That was a mistake. Ross asks Vit if he's done, grinning up at her host. The Nazi shudders, trying to apologize, but he's already too late. Ross cradles his face, reminding the commander she doesn't work for him. Put back in his place, Vit bows to her. The new recruits he promised will be here soon. He's only gotten 10, but Ross is happy with that. 10 are enough for what she has in mind. She picks up a short blade, almost cradling it. 
Still on edge, Vit mutters about what will happen if this rite doesn't work. Ross, though, tells him that it will. She stabs the Nazi commander in the arm, drawing his blood. They'll make this work. Back outside, the commandos are packing away their parachutes. Cap, who came down in the lake, is waiting out to shore to join them. They're in the operating zone. Now they're back together, the captain lays out their direction, heading east from this point to reach the wolf's lair. Dum Dum tells Reb to go ahead and check the path. Reb's happy to do it, moving off right away, but Cap counters that order. They're gonna stick together. Dum Dum tries to be polite about it, pointing out Reb's scouting experience and claiming this is normal for the commandos. He's just trying to help, but the captain's not having it. He's in command for this mission. Fury trusted him with the unit. What he says goes. That was the last straw for Dugan. He snaps at Cap, the Howling Commando standing at ease around them, letting the fight play out. Dugan calls Cap out as a glorified marketing scheme, insisting he's better placed to actually take command here. But before the argument can continue, there's a harsh crack from the undergrowth. The commandos and Cap all turn towards it, the argument forgotten. They weren't supposed to reach Nazi-held territory for another five miles. Cap goes ahead, the commandos backing him up, guns ready. Before they can reach the target though, they hear an ear-piercing, rumbling howl. A pack of massive, man-like wolves leap out at the howling commandos, snarling with bloodlust. Dum Dum's bewildered. These don't look like any normal wolves. Cap takes the first claw attack, bouncing the wolf's furious swipe away with his shield. He yells to his men to stay alert. The commandos are firing freely on the dark shapes that draw close to them, putting round after round into the wolf monsters. The bullets don't seem to be doing much. These things aren't even slowing down. The commandos back away, still firing as best they can. The wolves are in melee range now. One nod at a man's hand, breaking his rifle with one clawed swipe. The next takes a pistol in its maw, forcing the commando shot to go wide as it wraps a massive claw around the soldier's neck. Reb's got his knife out, trying to keep some distance from the creature. He's starting to recognize what they're dealing with. The guy next to him insists he's wrong. Monsters aren't real. Dum Dum's got a particularly massive one charging right at him now, and it's fast enough to dodge most of his shots. The wolf gets right up in Dugan's face, knocking his rifle away and tackling him to the ground. Dum Dum tries to wrestle it off, the wolf bringing its fangs closer, getting ready to rip his throat out. I don't know how Sergeant Fury ran things, but in my unit, we don't swear, Corporal. Cap knocks the wolf off of Dum Dum with one good shield bash to its side. Faced with stronger prey, the creature turns to the captain, trying to reach past its shield. Before it can, Cap pushes it back once again, but it's still standing. This thing's taken two strong hits from the man who can rip through tanks. They really don't go down easy. Cap calls for Dum Dum and the rest to stay behind him, raising his shield high. He's the only one with a chance against this monster. The Star Spangled Sentinel charges forward, shield raised high. He gets the first punch in on the wolf, but it's not enough to force it back. The creature brings its claws down on Steve's chest, drawing bloodlines right through his uniform. The wound's deep enough to make Cap put a hand to it. He's reeling, and the wolves can tell, pushing him back. It's all Steve can do to get his shield up, blocking any more blows for now. But before the fight can go further, the sun breaks through the darkness. The wolves howl in pain, backing away from the howling commandos. Suddenly afraid, the monsters run for their lives, retreating back into the undergrowth. The commandos have no idea what to make of this. The best they've got is that these things just don't like the sun. Reb's about to call them werewolves, but Dino throws a pebble at him before crossing his arms. Werewolves can't be real. Yeah! The, the big, shaggy, furry creatures who attacked you under a full moon and ran away. Who howled, bit, and clawed. Those weren't werewolves, Dino, totally. Junior finds that as hard to buy as I do, pointing out Dino can't know everything. The older guy insists that he's been all over the world and never seen a werewolf. 
That means they don't exist. Junior, not able to give this up, asks him what he thinks they are then. Dino admits he's got no answer. He just isn't willing to buy that was some mythical monster. Dum Dum heads over to Cap, taking his hat off. Captain, what do you think they are? Before Cap can give a decent answer, he falls to his knee, grasping his hand and groaning in pain. <clears throat> Dum Dum calls out, concerned. The other commandos join them, worried about the commotion. Dino spots what looks like a bite wound. Cap's groan turns to a scream of agony. The pain's not stopping. His body starts to twist, breaking that familiar uniform. His gloved hands gives way to claws. His arms grow even more muscular, now covered by a thick layer of shaggy brown fur. His mouth's full of sharp fangs, made to tear flesh to pieces. I think… I think you're gonna have to kill me, Corporal Dugan. The commandos are facing a fully turned werewolf Captain America. There's no way to know how long he can hold himself back. This just got very bad, very fast. Wow, not a great day for Cap. Last time he had it this bad, he sat around for days just moping, 